Okay, Brendan and I just flew into Uchi Lake Lodge. It's Friday evening. We kind of flew in a day early. And uh, this is already late evening, and it's... I'll show you outside in a second, but it's... The wind is blowing straight in to the point the camp is on. It's uh, intermittent rain and kind of blustery. I figured I'd show you guys exactly what I bring uh, on a flying trip. So everyone is different. It depends on the time of the year and uh, depends on pers and really more like what we're going to be targeting. Quite clearly we have a large arsenal of rods and reels here. This is uh, late August, almost September. So the arsenal is going to be a little different. And uh, I'll go through all of that shortly. I've got it all laid out on the table right here. So we're going to be doing a lot of walleye jigging. Um, primarily it's going to be jigging. And uh, we have a number of dedicated jigging rods. All right, this is, uh, this is Brendan's rod. This is a six and a half foot one piece St. Croix Legend Elite. It's rated for four to 10 pound test. We've got eight pound braid on all of the jigging rods, um, Power Pro braid, with a, um, a liter of either 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon, the last two feet uh, straight to the jig. This is a Northland Impulse Paddle Tail Minnow. I've got a whole variety of different colors. This is the electric chicken color. It's always a favorite. Okay, and here's my dedicated jigging rod. St. Croix Legend Elite, six foot three inch, extra fast action. And this particular rod is rated for six to 10 pound test. This is really the gold standard, just as far as length and action go, six foot three inch, extra fast action. And we're relatively sure every other rod company on the planet copied this one from St. Croix. I love this rod. This is my favorite walleye jigging rod. So on the business end of mine, I have this Weston Shad Tees Paddle Tail. Um, they're, def they're somewhat difficult to find, but I love the, the, the shape and profile and the colors of these baits. I think they're, they come from Europe. And uh, just on a, a darter head jig. This is my second dedicated walleye jigging rod. This is a pretty sweet rod. This is the Legend X from St. Croix. This one's six foot eight inch, medium power, extra fast action. Again, rated for six to 10 pound test. And I have a uh, blade bait on that one. I've got a box full of them. I love, love, love pulling blade baits for walleye. Aggressive hits. And I don't know if you can see that. I have a, a short little leader, like a single strand leader with a, with a snap, a little cross lock snap on the end right there. This we brought on a whim. This is a little like five, five and a quarter foot one piece St. Croix Premier uh, ultralight rod. It's like a fast action, really, really a light power. Um, this is a brook trout rod actually we use for brook trout, but uh, we're just gonna play around with that one. And the other walleye, sort of dedicated walleye rod. This is a seven foot medium heavy power Legend Elite spinning rod. Um, this is an, a ballistic, a Daiwa ballistic reel, uh, 4,000 size, 20 pound braid, and on the business end I have about 2 to 3 feet of uh, 17 pound fluorocarbon right down to a cross lock snap right there. So this particular rod I use for casting crankbaits, uh, suspending jerk baits, rattle baits, anything like that when we're on fish. And I want to throw a body bait. That is the rod that I use. Okay, so over here we have our very large array of pike rods and reels. Uh, this, these two rods here are St. Croix uh, inshore saltwater rods. This is a seven foot medium heavy Avid series. This is a legend tournament. Same exact power, seven foot medium heavy. They're rated for like 10 to 20 pound test. 4,000 series. Um, uh, Stratic CI4s with 30 pound braid and then a, s a single strand titanium leader on the business end. We use these primarily for uh, casting lighter baits for pike, mostly spoons. Anything that doesn't have a lot of drag, the uh, spinning rods and reels I prefer, much prefer. So here we have two slightly lighter ones. These are Loomis rods. 
I probably shouldn't be saying that out loud. <laughs> anyway, it's okay. Um, this is a an a lead or a Loomis E6X. Also, this is also a, an inshore saltwater spinning rod. I really like the inshore saltwater spinning rods in general when I'm casting for pike with a spinning rod. They're typically um, a little bit beefier, longer handles usually, and just overall a little bit more powerful than the salt or the freshwater versions. Um, which this one is. This is a tip, this is a standard E6X um, extra fast action. I think that one's rated for 10 to 17 pound test. And again, uh, an oversized spinning reel loaded with 30 pound braid and a single strand titanium. This is actually a multi strand titanium leader. Okay, this is my dedicated pike casting rod. This is actually a little bit longer. It's a 7 foot 10 inch medium heavy power. It's rated for 12 to 25 pound test. And I have a really, really nice um, Shimano Bantam HG spinning reel, or bait casting reel. So we've got 40 pound braid on these, on our casting reels. Um, again, with a, uh, a shorter titanium leader. This is a multi-strand titanium leader. This is a 12 inch leader. I believe that's a 60 pound leader. So we'll use that for casting spinner baits, uh, throwing top water, actually a whole bunch of variety of different baits. Brendan has a, a similar bait caster right here for casting. And then we have our trolling rods. So these are these are heavy power St. Croix trolling rods. This is an Avid X. They only come in one configuration, seven foot four inch heavy power. And these are rated for actually, well, this one's rated for 14 to 25 pound test. We've got an old 301 uh, Curado, uh, which you can't even get anymore. I love the reel. This is the exact same rod, seven foot four inch heavy power, except this one's the Legend Tournament version. And I have an also, this is an older reel too. It's a, uh, a uh, Shimano Calcutta TEDC. 200 size so we got 40 pound braid on those reels in uh, in the fall um, we do a lot of trolling um, you know often the cabbage is starting to die so we're not really we you know you can still get little windows where you can cast spinner baits and spoons and stuff across deep cabbage and we are hoping to do that but my guess is we're going to be primarily trolling so we're looking for rock structure points mid lake humps, anything like that that drops quickly into deep water um, and you troll the deeper diving crankbaits. Um, they seem to like the bigger baits this time of the year. Any place where there's a high concentration of walleyes as well, you're going to have big pike lurking around. So we'll figure it out as we go, but I expect probably a good number of the big pike this week are going to be caught trolling. So now we're going to look at this pile of stuff that we have here. Let's we'll start with the uh, the walleye boxes. I've got way too much lead than I need. I've got a whole bunch of different darter heads and just around jig heads and a variety of different colors. Um, these ones here, the uh, Nor Northland Thumper jig heads, I believe they're called, with the blade on them. I really like these jigs and stained water. The the added blade, the flash of the blade really helps. I've got probably, I don't know, five pounds of blade baits here. And then a variety of different jigging spoons. I like, uh, in the same kind of places we run the, uh, the blade baits, I like using spoons. Typically deeper water, if they're in like 25 to 30 foot plus. It stays vertical as possible with the blade baits and the spoons and, and rip them. And they usually hit on the upswing and they almost rip your arm off. It's awesome. Here's my my assortment of plastics that I kind of threw together quickly uh, just before we left. Clearly you can see there's a, an emphasis on paddle tail minnows and I've got a, a broad array, a lot of different Weston shad tees in different colors. Um, there's this one, this one, this one, and this one. They're all Weston shad tees. Northland impulse paddle tails. Um, Berkeley ripple shads. I'm losing my mind. And a whole bunch of other stuff. I can't even remember what the heck these are. 
but they all work. And then a selection of, of larger twister tails. When I'm when I'm running grubs, I usually like larger ones. All different colors are all crammed together, all kind of not very well perfectly organized, but that's the way it goes. And then a few other bags of plastics. You can't go wrong with white, so I grabbed a couple of bags of white four inch twister tails and uh, these brown and orange ones always a good one these larger grubs we use to tip our spoons and spinner baits with so I always have a bag of those just in case silicone skirts in case we need to replace the skirts on our spinner baits and I like to tip my weedless spoons quite often with a silicone skirt this box here is crammed full of larger deep diving crankbaits Live target suckers, um, li oversized live target perch. There's some top water in there too, some whopper ploppers. A variety of different just uh, oversized crankbaits. I'm not even sure what these are. These are like, these ones here, or that one right there is like a knockoff of a, uh, a Rapala um, Super Shad wrap or whatever they're called. But anyway, that would be one of our boxes for pike that I expect we're going to use a lot on this trip. We've probably got like $2,000 of crankbaits in here. There's just a, everything's, this is the way I roll on the flying trips because uh, you can't bring uh, everything perfectly organized in separate compartments. You stuff as many lures as you can. And there's a whole variety of like shallow running jointed crankbaits. There's some J13s here. There's all kinds of um, live target smelts. I got tons of those in there. Jointed rapalas, different uh, rattle baits, uh, suspending jerk baits. There's like a whole bunch of suspending jerk baits. A variety of different stuff co to cover all the the uh, the bases from shallow to deep when it comes to walleye. This is a very important box, right? The, the Holy Grail. That's the Holy Grail. Yes. So this is uh, my spoon box. When it comes to pike, doesn't matter what time of the year, um, I fish with spoons. So there's tons and tons of doctor spoons here. If anyone watches my videos, I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, I'm not going to pull them all out, but there's... so. There's mostly doctor spoons here. Um, there's a whole bunch of weedless spoons, weedless doctor spoons, weedless Johnson silver minnows. There's, um, these are actually, they look like doctor spoons, all the ones in this corner here, but these are, this is a doctor spoon. This is a very well chewed doctor spoon. <laughs> these are uh, a spoon made by Jack Penny, who's now deceased, but uh, custom to custom colors. There's a pike pattern one. And uh, yeah, Dr. Spoons, Dr. Spoons. In this box here we have Rapala tail dancers in a variety of different colors. Most of them are the same size. These will run to 30 feet on a long lead. And they're kind of a multi-purpose uh, crankbait. Um, they're really highly attractive to both walleye and pike. Um, I've caught a lot of big pike and a lot of walleye, and there's some smaller ones here too, walleye, more walleye sized ones. Again, I really love that bait. And they're very deadly, they don't really hold up that well. If you use them a lot, they get uh, kind of destroyed, but yeah, anyway, um, I still use them because they work. Two smaller Plano boxes kind of stuffed full of, uh, one is inline spinners, and the other one is spinner baits. This is really bad. I'm having one of those moments. I can't remember what these in. They're really simple lures. It's a silicone skirt um, with a big single Colorado blade, and then there's like a single um, swim bait style hook. But you can rig this kind of weedless if you want. I usually kind of leave the hook more exposed. Um, but you can run these through cabbage. They're just unbelievable um, inlines for that. And then spinner baits. I've got a very large assortment of spinner baits in here. Again, I'm not going to pull them all out, but I prefer, in general, one and a half to two ounce spinner baits. <clears throat> this is a rad dog spinner bait. Unbelievable bait. I love the size. It comes in all different colors. Unbelievably durable. Hey, Bren? Oh, yeah. In Saskatchewan, 
last month. Hundreds of plays on it. Yeah, and yeah. and they stand up where other spinner baits. And I'm not like sponsored by Rad Dog or anything. I'm just telling you, like I I use a lot of different spinner baits, but these particular baits they stand up to a ton of abuse so anyway there's a box crammed full of all there I'm not gonna pull them all out that would be a nightmarish for me It'd take like half an hour to get it all back in so anyway that's for casting if we still find some green cabbage we're gonna be utilizing these inlines and the spinner baits and then other than that I have a box of tools uh, braid scissors pliers this is a fluorocarbon for um, the business end of our walleye jigging rods. This is heavier fluorocarbon for my, my walleye casting rod, 17 pound, that's 12 pound. We've got some 10 pound there. Obviously a fillet knife, a uh, couple of sets of jaw spreaders, <coughs> uh, floating markers, so you know it's always good to have that uh, visual reference point if you're on a mid lake hump it's really helpful I always bring up at least two floating markers so here we have a little bag of chunks of wood and you might be asking what's that for it's kind of important so anytime we're doing a lot of trolling um, <clears throat> these rod holders any rod holder that you use these are tight lock rod holders they're lightweight aluminum um, there's more durable heavy duty rod holders on the market but these ones are plenty fine especially for flying trips they're really lightweight and they're strong but the problem is when you clamp these onto the gunnel of the boat if you don't have a piece of wood on either side this is what this is for it's just like a little one by two cut into uh, like a little chunk one on either side of the rod holder so that you can clamp it down and it's nice and tight and it won't slip so other than that, in the bottom there, there's just a whole array of leaders, uh, mostly, almost all titanium, multi-strand and single strand, and then some short ones for uh, the jigging uh, rods. Um, sometimes we'll use that. If you get a lot of bites from hammer handles and you're getting bit off like, you know, 10 times every 15 minutes, then we'll use those little short single strand leaders for the walleye. A big bag of batteries for my handheld GPS there's a lighter in there there's a whole bunch of miscellaneous junk in there and that's about it um, other than our well another important piece of equipment the electronics so this is a basic hummingbird 5 graph and um, <clears throat> we didn't have to bring a battery into Uchi on this trip so which is helpful because we flew commercially to get here uh, they have batteries, and uh, but anyway, this is how I connect my transducer. Can you come over here for a sec, Brent? I can't uh, just uh, just want to show this. So this is a magnetic transducer. It works like a charm. So um, this goes on. This does not go on the inside of the boat. This goes on the outside of the boat, and on the transom, and this goes on the inside, and boom. Your fingers. Yeah. Crossed. We're gonna play chicken later. Hold your finger and see what happens. You'd crush it. They're really powerful magnets. Works like a charm. It says on the website that you can actually mount these on the side of the boat. You can't. They will fly off at high speed. <laughs> but on the transom where you normally clamp your uh, transducer with a piece of wood and a C-clamp or however you do it, um, this works like a charm. It's nice and clean and neat. It, it fits right inside. I have a bag for that unit too. It, everything all fits together and it's it's just a great 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 little thing. Fish towels, a couple of fish towels and then to, to cap things off the pool noodle. <laughs> so here. Take one. This is why we have the pool noodle. For this. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So when we want to when we want to burn off steam after a long day, we ow. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's not why I brought the pool noodles, but it actually works good for that too. Yeah. <laughs> the pool noodle, we we cut them in half and we cut slots from the side. These snap over the gunnels, and I use these to hang my lures. 
it's the absolute best. Simple, cheap, it never comes off, it's tight, and uh, very handy, right? Yep. All I right. work out with these. Yeah. Definitely. Your arms are noodles. You better yeah. start working out. That's it. That's the array of uh, gear for your typical walleye and pike flying trip. It's a little bit different, especially on the pike end of things, because this is early September, and as I said, we're going to be doing more trolling. So I, bought, I brought uh, stuff for that, which in the spring there would be a huge box of plastics, like unweighted plastics, like Senkos and a lot of swim baits and stuff like that, and big oversized twister tails, because, you know, you're fishing one to two feet of water, often with an unweighted hook, and uh, we're not going to be doing any of that in this trip, so depends from season to season how you pack, but uh, I think, as usual, we have way more than we need, but uh, anyway, it is what it is, right? Yep. Well, I'm going fishing. Bye. All right. He he actually is going fishing. He's going to go cast off those rocks. Give me a shout if you get one. 